A Brief History of the Empire, Part 4, by Stronach Kethaj III, Imperial Historian. The first book of the series described in brief the first eight emperors of the Septon dynasty, beginning with Tiber I. The second volume described the War of the Red Diamond and the six emperors who followed. The third volume described the troubles of the three emperors, the frustrated Uriel IV, the ineffectual Sephoris II, and the heroic Uriel V. On Uriel V's death across the sea in distant, hostile Akavir, Uriel VI was but five years old. In fact, Uriel VI was born only shortly before his father left for Akavir. Uriel V's only the other progeny by a more morganatic alliance were the twins Morihatha and Eloisa, who had been born a month after Ural V left. Ural VI was crowned in the 290th year of the Third Era. The imperial consort, Thonica, as the boy's mother, was given a restricted regency until Ural VI reached his majority. The elder council retained the real power, as they had ever since the days of Kataria I. The council so enjoyed its unlimited and unrestrained freedom to promulgate laws and generate profits that Ural VI was not given full license to rule until 307, when he was already 22 years old. He had been slowly assuming positions for responsibility for years, but the council and his mother, who enjoyed even her limited regency, were loath to hand over the reins. By the time he came to the throne, the mechanisms of government gave him little power except for that of the imperial veto. This power, however, he regularly and vigorously exercised. By 313, Uriel VI could boast with conviction that he truly did rule Tamriel. He utilized defunct by networks in guardianates to bully and coerce the difficult members of the Elder Council. His half-sister, Morihatha, was, not surprisingly, his staunchest ally, especially after her marriage to Baron Ulfgerson of Winterhold, brought her considerable wealth and influence. As the sage Ugarj said, Uriel V conquered Ezraniat, but Uriel VI conquered the Elder Council. When Uriel VI fell off a horse and could not be resuscitated, by the finest imperial healers. His beloved sister, Morihatha, took up the imperial tiara. At 25 years of age, she had been described and admittedly self-serving diplomats as the most beautiful creature in all of Tamriel. She was certainly well-learned, vivacious, athletic, and a well-practiced politician. She brought the Archmagister of Skyrim to the imperial city and created the second imperial battle mage since the days of Tiber Septim. Morihatha finished the job her brother had begun and made the imperial province a true government under the empress and later the emperor. Outside the imperial province, however, the empire had been slowly disintegrating. Open rebellions and civil wars had raged unchallenged since the days of her grandfather, Sephora II. Carefully coordinating her counterattacks, Morihatha slowly claimed back her rebellious vassals, always avoiding overextending herself. Though Morihatha's military campaigns were remarkably successful, her deliberate pace often frustrated the council. One councilman, an Argonian who took the Colovian name Thoricleus Ramus, furious at her refusal to to send troops to his troubled Black Marsh is commonly believed to have hired the assassins who claimed her life in 3E339. Ramos was similarly tried and executed, though he protested his innocence to the last. Morihatha had no surviving children, and Eloisa had died of a fever four years before. Eloisa's 25-year-old son, Pelagius, was crowned Pelagius IV. Pelagius IV continued his aunt's work, slowly bringing back under his wing the radical and refractory kingdoms, duchies, and baronies of the empire. He exercised Morihatha's poise and circumspect pace in his endeavors, but alas, he did not attain her success. The kingdoms had been free of constraint for so long that even a benign imperial presence was considered odious. Nevertheless, Palgeus died after a notably stable and prosperous 29-year reign. Tamriel was closer to unity than it had been since the days of Uriel I. Our current emperor, his awesome and terrible majesty, Uriel Septim VII, son of Palgeus IV, has the diligence of his great aunt Morihatha, the political skill of his great uncle Uriel VI, and the military prowess of his great granduncle Uriel V. For 21 years he reigned and brought justice and order to Tamriel. In the year 3E389, however, his imperial battle mage Jagar Tharn betrayed him. Ariel VII was imprisoned in a dimension of Tharn's creation, and Tharn used the sorcery of illusion to assume the emperor's aspect. For the next ten years, Tharn abused imperial privilege, but did not continue Ariel VII's schedule of free conquest. It is not entirely known what Tharn's goals and personal accomplishments were during the ten years he masqueraded as his liege lord. In 3E399, an enigmatic champion defeated the battle mage in the dungeons of the imperial palace and freed Ariel VII from his other dimensional jail. Since his emancipation, Earl Septon VII has worked diligently to renew the battles that would reunite Tamriel. Tharn's interference broke the momentum, it is true, but the years since have been proven, but the years since then have proven that there is hope of the golden age of Tiber Septim's rule glorifying Tamriel once again.